Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today. In this video, we're gonna be continuing on with that pre-launch, I guess, quick tips and tricks uh, to help you get your boat ready for spring. Now, specifically, I'm gonna be looking at applying two different types of non-skid textures, uh, whether it's you're trying to blend into an existing non-skid you know, as a repair, or you're just looking to basically start with a clean slate and put a brand new texture on down altogether. So with that said, let's just get started. So now with our panel prep, the first style of non-skid that I want to try is going to be kind of that uh, like sprinkled sand kind of texture, which personally I really like. It gives you excellent footing and it just, I don't know, I just, I think it looks really, really sharp. Uh, I've, done demo, I've done a demo like this uh, using Alexio Paint. And I'll put a link for that video down below in the description if you'd like to check that out. Uh, but I've never tried it with gel coat and I've had over this past week, like I had mentioned, uh, probably no less than 30 emails of people asking, you know, how do I do this? How do I do this type of, uh, you know, non-skid using gel coat? You know, for one reason or another, they just they want to stick with gel coat rather than paint. And unfortunately, up to this point, I've had to say, I don't know. I can take some guesses, but I really can't tell you for sure. Well, today I'm hoping to figure that one out. So now the first coat that I'm going to put down is going to obviously be gel coat but uh, it's going to be the gel coat that does not contain wax. I'm going to want this surface to be a, a laminating type surface so that I can come back and top coat and hopefully seal in all the, uh, the, the soft sand grit uh, tomorrow morning without having to sand. So the only way I'm able to do that is if I'm using a non-waxed laminating gel coat. Now for this non-skid grit, I'm going to be using the soft sand. It's their medium grit in there in the white. And the white is what I've always used. They, they do have colored particles as well. I have not used them. I've always used white and it's worked out perfectly for me. So I'm going to very, very liberally coat this entire wet section while it's still wet. Okay. I, I do not want this to tack up. I want to get as much, or I should say as good of an adhesion as I can with the soft sand uh, to the gel coat as possible. So I'm going to hold it up uh, about a foot or so above. At this point, I am not concerned at all about getting too much on here. I'd rather have too much and have to remove the excess tomorrow than not enough and have it not give you a nice uniform uh, uh, appearance after all this is finished. So very, very liberal. And if anybody's thinking that I'm going to end up wasting a lot of this material because I'm putting it on too heavy, uh, you actually, whatever doesn't stick, you're actually able to recover and reuse. There. Now, as you can see here, it is completely uniform in color from the color of the, the soft sand. There isn't any, any white gel coat kind of peeking through. I basically completely blanketed this, which I think is what I want to do. Uh, at least that's the way I do it with the, with the paint, and I have no reason to think otherwise that that's not how this should be done as well. So, for right now, uh, because this is a laminating gel coat, I'm going to be able to walk away for the rest of the day and then come back after this uh, gel coat has set up, sweep up the excess, vacuum off anything that's still loose. And at that point, then we're going to be able to come back over and top coat this with uh, some more gel coat. I haven't decided if I'm going to go over with another coat of non-waxed or if I'm just going to go straight to the, the waxed finishing gel coat. But that is a decision that I will have to make tomorrow morning. <laughs>
All right, so we got all the excess soft sand cleaned up, and I gotta say, it, it looks really good. I mean, it's consistent. There aren't any thin patches or, or bald patches. It's pretty much consistent side to side and top to bottom. Now, from here, uh, basically, we need to seal this grit in place. Now, typically, when, are you, when you're talking with paint, uh, I would be going over that over top of that with basically two seal coats of, of the uh, paint over two consecutive days. Now, gel coat's a little bit of a different creature here. So, what I would like to be able to do is to go over with a uh, with some thinned laminating gel coat. Now, I would probably thin it out with some styrene uh, to about 10%. Uh, except, unfortunately, my styrene <laughs> after about 10 years old is pretty much a solid block. So I don't, have the, uh, I don't have any materials here to thin this out. I, I know people are going to come up and say, well, you could use acetone. And I personally, I know a lot of people do, I personally don't like the thin gel coat with acetone just because it, it, I, I think it kind of breaks the material down and then it doesn't actually fully cure or at least cure as hard as it should. Uh, it always stays just a little bit soft in some instances. If you over thin it with acetone, it can actually just stay a little bit rubbery. So I personally... I, I, I don't thin gel coat with acetone. Uh, I, I thin gel coat very rarely, to be honest, which is why this little container has been sitting in my shelf for 10 years. But uh, if I were to, uh, to thin it, I'd be using styrene. Uh, so, going, so I guess uh, switching over to a plan B here then, what I am going to do is I'm going to roll out a very, very thin coat of unthinned laminating gel coat just because it's what I've got. Now, when I say very thin, I mean really thin, probably thinner than what you would normally need to lay up in order for the material to cure. Now, gel coat, when you, when you lay it up, gel coat needs to be a minimum of 20 mils, that's M-I-L-S, mils thick, uh, in order for it to fully cure. And that's about the same thickness as about four or five sheets of standard printer paper. Now, for all you metric folks, because I get called out on this every time I, I mention that, 20 mils is roughly one half of a millimeter. So, I mean, it's pretty thin. So, when, I'm gonna, uh, when I come over with the initial coat of laminating gel, I'm going to try and roll it really, really thin. I just want to basically uh, let some of the, the, the solvent in the gel coat kind of get sucked in or, or absorbed by the soft sand. And then I'll let that sit for about an hour, come over top of that then with my finishing gel coat, which will be, you know, the gel coat that has wax in it. Uh, what I'm kind of curious to see is, because I, I'm not able to go over with the first layer of thinned out gel coat, I'm going to be curious to see how much that's actually going to muddy, uh, I guess, the, the ending texture of this non-skid after everything is you know, said and done and fully cured. Uh, so for right now, um, yeah, I'm just going to mix up, let's just mix up some gel coat. Again, this is going to be laminating gel coat because I want to be able to go over top of this again in about an hour without having to worry about sanding. And if I were to use wax, well, that wouldn't happen. So laminating gel coat on this first coat and see how it goes. All right, now while I'm waiting for this side to kind of set up a little bit more, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment here. This is actually, it's a, it's a type of non-skid that I've wanted to try. I've tinkered with it in the past, haven't really got very good results with it. Uh, but what I'm looking for is kind of like the, uh, uh, it's like a stippled, kind of rolled out type of, uh, type of a non-skid. You see these a lot, on, uh, specifically on older boats. And the way that I've tried it in the past, it just never really worked out. The, the texture just wasn't there. You know, by the time it rolled out and the gel kind of settled a little bit, uh, it was either like spikes sticking up going through your foot, <laughs> or it was just so muddled, it, you just, it, it didn't give you any traction. It wasn't really any better than standing on like smooth, slick, uh, wet gel coat. So the, the thing I'm going to be trying today that's going to be a little bit different 
is the type of roller that I'm using. Now in the past I've always used just like a regular old, like a maybe a quarter inch nap. I've tried a quarter inch nap and like a foam roller and it just didn't work. So these are, I guess, what's referred to as like carpet rollers. And I got these through Jamestown. I think there's a, uh, yeah, yeah, I got these through Jamestown. They don't have them on Total Boat. Uh, but I've had these kicking around the shop here uh, for over two years. And I just, again, this is just one of those things that I wanted to try, but just never took the time to do it. Well, with this whole thing and my work schedule kind of being all screwed up, I figured there's no better time than now. <laughs> so now what I'm gonna try, uh, along with this roller is I'm going to mix up some of this again some more laminating gel coat and this looks like it's going to probably take the last of what I have uh, everything else I have is all waxed or finishing gel coat uh, where's my opener screw it stir stick time uh, what was I saying okay so the thing I'm gonna try that's a little bit different this time uh, is I'm gonna thicken I'm gonna thicken this uh, laminating gel coat a little bit with some silica. I figure that'll give it a little bit, little bit more texture, a little bit more body. So as I'm rolling it out with this, with this uh, carpet roller, All right, now just to give you guys a, a bit of a close up here on what this roller looks like. It's, well, it kind of looks like a carpet. It, it has very, very little nap. Uh, it, it doesn't have any like fuzz per se sticking up. It's more like little tiny little loops. And depending on how well this turns out, if, you, uh, if you're curious to kind of learn more about this, uh, I will include the link uh, to Jamestown on this uh, specific roller. Now, just so you can get a good idea of kind of how this is looking right now, uh, I would say that for right now, this looks a little rough. It's awfully textured. I mean, no doubt it, it would give you good grip. Um, but I think it's a little rough as, a, as an actual finished coat. But honestly, I think that's going to be all right because remember, this, this gel coat was laminating gel coat, so it doesn't have any wax on it. So it's not going to fully cure, you know, as it is right now. Now, my thinking is that if I come back over this again with some unthickened finishing gel coat, you know, that has the wax in it, that's going to fill in a little bit of the, a little bit of the texture, kind of smooth it out a little bit. Uh, again, because that was one of the problems I always ran into before, is that it was either way, way too textured, and it just it didn't it look like crap to be honest or it just it was too muddled and it didn't have enough texture so I'm trying to find that sweet balance kind of right in the middle but I'm thinking that by the time I come over this again with a with a coat of the finishing wax unthickened remember uh, that'll cure everything off and I think it's going to kind of smooth it over and give that kind of rolled kind of stippled effect and uh, we'll see uh, this has got to cook for probably about an hour or so before I'm able to do that but right about now I think that this, this stuff over here, it's still pretty tender, but I think I can come back and uh, get this top coated now with some finishing gel coat with wax. Now again here, just so you can get a little bit, a little bit of a closer shot here as to how this looks right now. 
Uh, this was just rolled out with the second coat of waxed gel. And it looks, I don't know, <laughs> as, good as, it, uh, as good as it can look, I guess, when it's still wet. We'll have to see uh, how it feels when it's actually uh, set up and cured, which won't be until tomorrow. But for right now, I think it looks pretty good. So rather than doing another rinse and repeat, uh, well, I'm going to wait for this other side, this tackier side that we did with the, the carpet roller. I'm going to wait for that to set up. Uh, before I leave tonight, I'll be able to come back and then roll on a second coat. Uh, I'll record it. I don't know if I'm actually going to keep it inside the video because it's just going to be another rinse and repeat of what you just saw. But I'll record it, and if something interesting happens, well, then I'll, I'll include it in the video. Uh, otherwise, uh, most likely, next time when we come back, uh, all of this is going to be coated and cured. So maybe I'll see you later tonight. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> So it is the following day, and both of these samples have set up. And I, I gotta be honest, might be a little bit biased, but they, they both look really nice. So now I put a couple pieces of yellow tape on here just so the camera has something to focus on. Now, obviously, these are two very, very different styles of, of non-skid. Uh, one, this one over here, being a little bit more common, something that you'll see more oftentimes than not on like uh, older boats. Uh, just kind of like that uh, kind of rolled out, uh, well, kind of that, that rolled out look. Whereas this one over here, this is, uh, you know, it, it's certainly not new, but it's something that you're going to see a little bit more commonly on, say, like newer or at least restored boats. Now, it's been less than 24 hours since I laid up the last, I guess, application of finishing gel coat. But even still, after only about 16 hours, I mean, it's still very hard and very scratch resistant. Now, because this has been such a, I guess, a fairly short period of time, uh, this gel coat will continue to cure and, and harden uh, even further uh, for probably, depending on your temperature, roughly another week or so. Uh, but even still, after only roughly 16 hours, uh, it's essentially ready to go back into service if you were going to be doing this type of application on your boat. I would probably hold off on at least two or three days until you gave it some really, really hard service or, or, or hard use, abuse. <laughs> but even still, these were two very quick uh, turnaround type non-skid applications. Now, as far as the texture, both of these non-skid patterns would give excellent, excellent footing. Uh, one thing I will say is that this pattern over here, this is the one that was rolled on uh, with the thickened gel coat. Uh, initially, this was a little bit sharp on the feet, just because as you're rolling it out, you get the little peaks that were sticking up. Well, as they cured, you know, as a peak, they became pretty sharp. But after giving it a, a quick little knockdown with some sandpaper, I mean, literally like that, it knocks the peaks off. And right now, this, this would actually feel very, very comfortable on your feet and still give you excellent, excellent traction. So now, as far as grip, I think either one of these types of patterns would do a very, very good job at keeping you upright as you're walking around the boat. But I do have to say, the, the soft sand side, uh, just as you're rubbing your hand across it, it has more resistance. You've got to push a little harder to make your hand slide across, more so than over on this side, which is the, the rolled out uh, pattern. And to me, that resistance is going to just basically translate into better footing. Now, is one of these patterns better than the other? I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think it comes down to personal preference. Uh, they're both going to do a very, very good job at keeping you, you know, on your feet and giving you good traction. But for me personally, I actually like the, the, the soft sand appearance just because it looks a little bit more refined and it's a, it's a more consistent pattern and appearance just kind of over the entire area. So I mean, for me personally, I like the soft sand, but that's just me. Either one of them would look very, very nice. So for those of you that might be interested in trying out the soft sand, either with paint or with gel coat, they've given me a 10% discount code to pass along to you guys for online orders. And that discount code is BWT10. And as always, I will have the links and more of the information about that down below in the description. And on that note, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance, that does help a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.